Okay, so today we're going to be starting a new topic on acids and alkalis. So make sure you put your book open. You've written yourself in the title, Acids and Alkalis. And the first subheading for today is acids. Now, while you're watching these videos, uh, you need to, anytime I say pause to copy something down, you need to make sure you pause it, copy down what you see. Or if I say pause it and answer a question, you need to make sure you pause it and actually answer the question, otherwise it doesn't really work. Um, and also, if you want to pause it just to read something that I've read or go back over something, that's fine. You can rewind it, watch it again, um, just to make sure you, you, you're following correctly. Okay, so let's get started. So today, acids. Okay, so I've got here a list of acids. Now, some of these you might know about, some of these you might have heard of, uh, uh, some of them might be completely new to you. So um, citric acid, that's the acid that you get in lemons. And ethanoic acid, that's the acid that you get in vinegar. So acids are just a type of molecule that you can get. Although sometimes if you hear the word acid, you might think it's dangerous, but really, um, the acids in these two things actually give a lot of the flavour to those things. So sometimes acids can be dangerous, sometimes they're completely safe, sometimes we actually quite like them. Now, these three acids here, now these might be new to you. Now, these are the acids that we use in, in the lab. Okay, so at some point we'll be doing some experiments, and we're not likely to do experiments using uh, citric acid or ethanoic acid. Um, but we're more likely to be using these three acids here, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. Okay, um, so yeah, acid's just a common everyday things. Um, and the first thing that we need to talk about with acids is... Uh, con so sometimes when we talk about acids, we might think that they are strong, or weak, um, but we need to be careful about how we use uh, these words to describe acids. Uh, and really, it might be more accurate for us to talk about whether an acid is concentrated or whether it is dilute. So what do I mean by concentrated and dilute? Well, if we look at these three pictures here, okay, what I've got here, this is, we can call this pure hydrochloric acid. Now what do I mean by pure hydrochloric acid? What I mean is that in this liquid here, so this is, these are all, uh, these are the particles of acid and they're in a liquid. You can see from their arrangement they're very close together but they're not really in a, in a regular pattern and that's what the particles in the liquid look like. Now all of these particles are hydrochloric acid particles. That's the only thing that's in there. Okay. And that's what we mean by the word pure. So the word pure here, okay, it's got a very specific type of meaning in science. And it means only one type of substance. Now you might have, uh, you might go and buy some pure mineral water or something else like that from the supermarket. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's only one type of substance. Your mineral water is going to have water, but it's going to have lots of other things in there as well. So they're using the word pure in a different way to the way that we would use it. So that when we use it, we talk about pure, meaning only that one type of thing in there. Okay. Now, generally, we're not going to use pure hydrochloric acid. We're going to use it as a solution. So when we talk about concentrated or dilute, we're talking about in solution. And what I mean by that is we're going to take it and we are going to dissolve it in water. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take my pure hydrochloric acid that's only got hydrochloric acid molecules in it and I'm going to put it into some water. Now we can have one of two situations. So the first situation could be that I don't have many acid particles like that. Or the second situation could be that I've got lots of acid particles. So all of these are 
acid. Like that. Okay, so again, we just need to make sure that we are completely clear that uh, these here, these blue ones, these are my hydrochloric acid. And the white ones here, these are just normal water molecules. Okay, so you can see here that there's there's roughly the same number of particles in both situations, but over here, we've only got a few hydrochloric acid particles, whereas over here, we've got a lot of hydrochloric acid particles. Okay, and it should be clear then that this one here, on the left-hand side, this is what we call dilute, and this one is what we call concentrated. Okay, so we now have three different situations. We can have pure, where it's only one type of thing in there, dilute, where there are a few of the substance that we're interested in, or concentrated, where there are lots of that substance in it. Okay, so uh, you should now pause the video and make sure you've got that picture in your book. Okay, so we don't have to draw the picture out every time, or otherwise that would take a long time. So if we look at these two situations, 370 grams of hydrochloric acid in one litre of water, compared to 3.70 grams of hydrochloric acid in one litre of water. So hopefully you can see that um, the amount of water is the same in both cases, However, in the first case, I've got quite a lot of my acid, and in my second case, I've not got very much of my acid. Okay, so you uh, should have worked out by now that this one, this is going to be your concentrated solution, and this one is going to be your dilute solution. Okay. Now, if we wanted to describe those in words, we would say that in our concentrated solution, we have um, a lot of acid particles in a certain volume of water compared to for our uh, dilute acid, which is going to be um, few acid particles in a certain volume of water. So um, what you've got there is uh, you've seen already the, the way you can have it in diagrams to see the difference between dilute and concentrated. And then you've got these descriptions here of dilute and concentrated. Okay, now the final thing that we need to talk about is whenever we're dealing with acids, uh, we need to worry about safety. Okay, so uh, the last thing you need in your book is just a quick note on safety. So some acids are corrosive. Okay, so this might be a word that you've heard before, it might not be a word that you've heard before. Um, now what corrosive means is that they can burn uh, the skin and eyes. Okay, um, now obviously citric acid in lemons and ethanoic acid in vinegar, they're not corrosive. Okay, so it's some acids are corrosive. Um, you can carry on eating your lemons and putting vinegar on your chips, no problem. However, when we're in the lab, sometimes we're going to need to use some special equipment to make sure that we don't um, hurt ourselves. So in order to avoid getting uh, acid into our eyes, we're always going to have to wear goggles. Um, and sometimes, although not always, uh, we might need to wear gloves. 
right? But the number one safety precaution whenever we're dealing with acids is we're always going to be wearing goggles, okay? So make sure you do that. Now, that's about it. However, I think for today, it would be good if we could, um, based on what we've got here and what you've now got in your books, uh, I think the really important thing is that you remember the difference between dilute and concentrated. So uh, you should get yourself a flashcard or something similar, just a piece of paper that you can turn over. Um, and on this side, we're going to have dilute solution. Um, we can have concentrated solution. Or if you want, you can make two different flashcards, one just for dilute and one just for concentrated. I'm going to do it on, on the same one. Okay, dilute solution, concentrated solution. And then on the reverse side of this, uh, the first one we had was dilute. So we're going to have a few particles in a certain volume of water. And on the other side, you can have, uh, sorry, on, underneath that where it was concentrated, it could be a lot of particles in a certain volume of water. And now you can add that to the flashcards that you've got, or if you haven't got your flashcards, you can start yourself a new pile, and then you can just test yourself on that. So you can get that out, maybe get someone else at home to, to test you on it. What's a dilute solution? What's a concentrated solution? Once you've said it, check the answers. Okay, well done.